Now, late last year, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky announced his country will be fortifying its borders with Russia and Belarus. One of the defensive lines that is being heavily reinforced is in the northern region of Chernihiv. It's from there that DW's Aya Ibrahim reports on efforts to ensure history, like Russia's full-scale invasion, does not repeat itself. In a high-tech 21st century war where drones rule the skies, there's still room for this, a basic physical barrier. When Russian troops invaded Ukraine in 2022, they crossed this area boarding Belarus to get to the capital. These newly built fortifications are meant to make sure that does not happen again. It consists of tetrahedrons, the so-called dragon's teeth. They are fixed with a metal cable so that they cannot be pushed apart by armored vehicles trying to get through. All this is held together with barbed wire and special anti-personnel wire. In addition, the area around these structures is also mined, so that armored vehicles cannot drive up and pass these barriers. An anti-tank ditch is being dug behind them, and then there are the strongholds of our defense. In other words, the barriers themselves delay the approaching vehicles and the military at the strongholds destroy them. Fortifications like these are also being built elsewhere closer to the front lines. For security reasons, we're not given exact details as to the location and progress of that mammoth project. But this one we visited took about six months to build and it was not without challenges. During construction, we had difficulties working with the local terrain and the water that was present under the ground. We started work before winter, and as you know, these temperatures reach sub-zero. The equipment, although it is iron, can simply stop and not start at a strong sub-zero temperature. People also get cold, and sometimes they cannot work, so we set up special heating points so that employees can warm up and work. There is also the rain, and we shouldn't forget about the terrain itself. There is groundwater in this area. Somewhere you dig two meters and it will be dry. And somewhere you just start digging with a shovel and you can already see the water. For example, I need a trench depth of 150 centimeters. In such cases, we need to communicate with the military, and they decide what to do in such a place where it is physically impossible to get that deep. As Ukraine shifts towards a more defensive strategy, soldiers here are deploying basics like wood, iron, concrete and barbed wire. Let's bring in military analyst Mike Martin from uh, King's College London for more on this. Mike, good morning. Do you agree that these good morning. fortifications are a sign that Kyiv is perhaps shifting its focus to defense because of Russian advances? Absolutely. Uh, I think, though, that the reason that they're shifting their focus to defense is because they have a lack of armaments from the West and particularly uh, artillery ammunition. And uh, really what's happened is Ukraine has learned from the Russians. The Russians built very similar fortifications that stopped the Ukrainian offensive last year in 2023. And the Ukrainians are now copying the trick. So how soon would uh, Ukraine need to get uh, ammunition and new armaments for it to go back to an offensive position? Uh, well, there's been a, a long-standing deficit. So in some areas, the Russians have been able to fire 10 shells for every shell that the Ukrainians have been able to fire. And so really... It's not how soon, it's, it's a negative time. In the past, they needed that ammunition. But once you have that ammunition, it's, it's not a big deal to shift onto the offensive again, providing that your troops are ready for it. And I think one of the things about defence as well we should highlight is that although the Ukrainians are going to go on the defensive now, uh, as mentioned in your package there, they still have to maintain offensive spirit. 
the obstacles are just to, there to stop the Russians, and then the Ukrainians will do localized counterattacks with their forces uh, to destroy the Russians as they approach uh, those fortifications. And these fortifications that we saw in that uh, report were in a particular part of the front line. Do you think that if it comes to stopping Russia, these will have to be built across the entire front line? I mean, yes, in short, uh, there are some areas of the front line where there are uh, natural defensive barriers. So uh, in some areas, uh, rivers, in other areas, hilltops, and those are obviously easier to defend because you've already, you know, nature's done most of the work for you. But where you have, as you're showing there on your screen, actually, where you have open ground, uh, that's the most difficult type of ground to defend because there's no cover. And so one of the things you're doing by digging trenches and creating strong points is effectively creating cover where there is no cover. But I would say that probably only about 10 to 20 percent of the front line has those natural defensive barriers in. So it is a big project. You know, going back to the initial uh, question that uh, I had at the opening of our talk, which is about Ukraine going into a defensive position, does Russia necessarily need to overcome these obstacles to claim victory? Or does the very fact that because Ukraine is becoming defensive work in Russia's favour? Well, <clears throat> Ukraine is being defensive in a sense of the land battle. So the land battle is becoming stagnated. But as we've probably seen in other news reports on Deutsche Welle, uh, Ukraine is hitting Russian uh, refineries and oil terminals. And that is having an effect on the oil market and Russia's ability to uh, produce um, refinery products like diesel and petrol. So that will affect its war effort. And Ukraine is also going on the offensive in the maritime domain, just recently sunk another couple of ships. Um, but to your point, it is to Russia's advantage because if the front lines get frozen, mm -hmm. if Donald, and really this all comes down to Donald Trump, if Donald Trump gets elected and the front lines are frozen, that gives him yet another excuse to solve the conflict. And by solve it, he means redraw the border where the front line sits. We'll leave it there for the time being. Mike Martin from King's College London, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Now let's bring in Frank Ledwidge. He's a senior lecturer in strategic studies at Portsmouth University and a former UK military intelligence officer. Uh, Frank, do you agree that these fortifications are a sign that Kyiv is shifting its focus to defence because of Russian advances? Good morning, Gerhard. Absolutely. It's very evident now that on all fronts, Ukraine is, is, uh, is under serious pressure, particularly in the south now and the southeast, where Russian forces are making incremental but significant over periods of time gains. So consequently, the decision, and this has been going on now for a couple of months, particularly since the fall of the great, of the fortress town, for that's what it was, of Avdivka. So Ukraine made the decision rather late, actually, in, in, uh, in, in real terms, in November to build the fortifications that you saw there on Ayers report. And the organisation of this has been criticised to a very great degree, I think, in Ukraine. But it is proceeding now. It's better late than never, no doubt about it. Uh, but there we have it. Yes, Ukraine is standing on the defensive. I think it has been since around November. And reality is setting in, literally and, and conceptually. Now, Russia um, has recently targeted Ukraine's energy infrastructure with drones and missiles. Does Ukraine's shift to defence on land work in Russia's favour in that way? Well, the two things are connected in that, in that Ukraine wants to see itself uh, building on the successes, of course, that it's having in, in and around Crimea, which, of course, is Ukrainian territory, uh, uh, building on that by striking Russian, as you say, the Russian energy and other infrastructure. It's doubtful whether that's having strategic effect, frankly. It's, it's certainly having local effect. Uh, some Luke Oil installations, I think, were damaged early this month for weeks, but it's not yet having strategic effect, I think. But nonetheless, that's, that's, the, that's the objective. And the, their aim, I think, which was declared late last year by General Zaluzhny, is who was commander-in-chief at the time, was really to, to major on this uh, striking of, of Russian infrastructure. But it, it's not yet ramped up, it's fair to say. 
Now, Kiev is keeping the location and the progress of this fortification project quiet in order to safeguard Ukraine from ground invasion. Would Kiev have to build such barriers along the entire front line? Well, you pointed out there that there are certain areas which are considered to be under threat. I mean, only today, the Ukrainian Ministry of Defence announced that they felt that Kharkiv now was, was a potential target. What they're looking at are the spring and summer offences that are anticipated by Russia. Certainly, what I would, I would assess one of those will go in in the southeast, uh, in, in Luhansk a province, a place called Kupiansk. That's been fortified now for many years, but it's certainly great work's going on. Sumy in the northeast was focused on by Zelensky earlier this week. Kharkiv, of course and down in Kherson. So there'll be areas of which they're focusing on. But, um, uh, and of course, terrain helps you in certain places. But ultimately, the objective seems to be, yes, to do what the Russians did across the front lines and, uh, and establish uh, defensive fortifications all along those lines. It's been done before, of course, in the First World War. It's just a, a massive effort. And, uh, I mean, one might be doubtful as to whether those fortifications would be evenly, evenly uh, effective and again, that's a concern in, in Ukraine. But look, they're focusing on the areas they think are a particular concern, and they'll build things that are effective in those areas. As we saw last year, fixed defences can be extremely, uh, extremely lethal against attacking forces. Frank Ledwood there, University of Portsmouth. Thank you very much, Frank. Thank you, Gerhard.